Let's say you have done the load calculation, you have considered the heat gain from the wall, window and other sources. You tabulated your result and you found your total cooling load. Now, is this the cooling capacity that you need? It doesn't seem right. What about the outdoor air? Bringing in outdoor air will surely increase the cooling capacity, right? Also, how do we account for dark losses? And should you include fan motor heat gain? If all of these need to be accounted for, then cooling load is not equal to coil load. So how do we determine the coil load? Coil load is equal to 4.5 times CFM times delta H. CFM is airflow, delta H is enthalpy difference. To find the enthalpy difference, we need to know the on-coil and off-coil conditions. For airflow, we use this formula. To determine the on-coil and off-coil conditions, we need to refer the psychometric chart. On the psychometric chart, this is the on-coil and off-coil enthalpy. Their difference is the delta H. To determine the on-coil and off-coil, we need to know several temperature points as shown in the chart. So let's start with airflow calculation. Airflow is equal to sensible cooling load divided by 1.08 times delta T. The delta T is the difference between the indoor design temperature and the supply air temperature. For the indoor design temperature, it is typically 75 degree Fahrenheit for comfort cooling. However, we also need to follow what the project or the application is required. If you are designing for a hospital, certain rooms might need to be maintained at 70 degree Fahrenheit. Otherwise, we'll just use 75 degree Fahrenheit. As for the supply air temperature, typically 18 degree Fahrenheit below the indoor design temperature. Some standards or guidelines may specifically mention the lowest possible supply air temperature. So if the indoor design temperature is 75 degree Fahrenheit, the supply air temperature is 57 degree Fahrenheit. Once we have our indoor design temperature and supply air temperature, we can total up our sensible cooling load and find our airflow. In our case, it's 2315 CFM. To find the off-coil enthalpy, we need the psychometric chart. At the top left corner, we have a compass. It represents the sensible heat ratio, SHR, in percentage. By dividing the sensible cooling load by the total cooling load, we get 80% sensible heat ratio. So we draw a line at 80%. Then at the center of the psychometric chart, we mark the indoor design temperature at 75 degree Fahrenheit and relative humidity at 50%. For comfort cooling, the acceptable relative humidity is between 40 to 60%. For now, we set at 50%. Next, we copy the sensible heat ratio line to the back of the indoor design temperature. Along this line, we mark the supply air temperature at 57 degree Fahrenheit. Now, from the supply air temperature, we want to determine the off-coil temperature. So there are two heat gains we need to account for. First is the heat gain from the supply air duct. This is also known as duct losses. For duct losses, we want to express it in terms of temperature rise. The supply duct temperature rise is duct length times 1.5 degree Fahrenheit divided by 100 feet. If we are not sure of the duct length, we can assume a temperature rise of 3 degree Fahrenheit. Later, when the duct design is done, we will check back this value. Next is the fan motor heat gain. It is generally calculated using this formula. However, there is a slight difference between if the fan motor is inside the airstream or outside the airstream. If the fan motor horsepower is not sure yet, we can assume a temperature rise of 2 degree Fahrenheit. So the total temperature rise is 5 degree Fahrenheit. Now back to the psychometric chart, we mark the off-coil temperature at 5 degree Fahrenheit below the supply air temperature. Now the off-coil relative humidity is 100%. However, in practice, it is more likely to be 95%. So we move the entire line down so that 
the off-coil condition is 95% relative humidity. So once our off-coil temperature is established, we can pull the line to the enthalpy side and we found that the enthalpy of the off-coil is 20.9 BTU per pound. To determine the on-coil enthalpy, we first need to consider the return duct temperature rise. The same formula can be used but with a slightly lower temperature rise multiplier. Similarly, we can also assume a 3 degree Fahrenheit temperature rise if the duct length is unknown yet. However, if you're using space above ceiling as the return plenum, you need to account for the heat gain due to lighting, wall, roof, infiltration and other possible sources. So we bring up the psychometric chart again and we mark the return air temperature as 3 degree Fahrenheit above the indoor temperature. Next, we want to include the outdoor air and calculate the mixed air temperature. When we are including the outdoor air, we need to determine the outdoor design conditions. In most cases, we'll use 95 degree Fahrenheit dry bulb and 82 degree Fahrenheit wet bulb because that's what most HVAC equipment are designed for. Otherwise, we'll follow our project requirement or refer to X-ray outdoor design conditions. As for how much outdoor air is required, we can use a general 15 CFM per person. Alternatively, we can use 1 CFM per square feet or refer to X-ray minimum ventilation requirement. If our total outdoor air is 465 CFM as shown, the outdoor air ratio is 20%. So as a result, the return air ratio is 80%. Since the outdoor air temperature is 95 degree Fahrenheit and the return air temperature is 78 degree Fahrenheit, the mixed air temperature can be calculated. However, if the outdoor air is introduced via a separate fan, you may want to add about 1 to 2 degree Fahrenheit to account for the fan motor heat gain. So now, on the psychometric chart, we mark the outdoor air temperature at 95 degree Fahrenheit dry bulb, 82 degree Fahrenheit wet bulb. Then, we connect the return air to the outdoor air. Finally, we mark the mixed air temperature of 81.4 degree Fahrenheit along this line to get the on-coil enthalpy, which is 31.8 BTU per pound. So, putting in the airflow, the on-coil and off-coil enthalpy into the equation, the ASU cooling coil capacity is 113,000 BTU, or about 9.5 ton. From about 56,000 BTU to 113 BTU, using the cooling load as the ASU capacity will result in an undercapacity system. For better accuracy, you can use psychromatic software to find the enthalpy. That's all for this video. Thank you.